Hey there YouTube, this is Aryan Wynn, and in this video I'm going to be discussing not only what the label of pro-choice means to me, but also the reasons why I think that this entire debate is in desperate need of reframing. I find that all too often what should be a comprehensive and complex debate about human reproductive rights is instead uh, boiled down to a screaming match between people who believe that abortion should be legal and people who believe that it should be illegal. And the problem with this for me is that you're focusing on a single aspect of a much broader issue and as a result um, not getting anywhere with that aspect because you're ignoring all of the contributing factors that play into the discussion. So I'm going to start by reading um, a uh, modified and broadened definition of what it means to be pro-choice, or perhaps more accurately what it means to be in favor of reproductive rights, and following that I will discuss it a little bit. Being pro-choice, or being in favor of reproductive rights, means believing that a person has the right to choose if, when, and with whom to have consensual sex. It means believing that a person has the right to access both hormonal and barrier methods of birth control and to choose if and when to use them. It means believing that a person has the right to choose if or when to undergo a medical procedure such as tubal ligation, either to avoid pregnancy or due to other health concerns. It means believing that a person has the right to choose whether to carry a pregnancy to term and deliver a baby, or to prevent or terminate a pregnancy by accessing emergency contraception or a safe and legally available abortion. Above all, it means believing that a person has the right to be educated about his or her body, to be educated about sex, and to be educated about reproductive rights, so that whatever decisions that person makes will be informed decisions. So the first thing that you may have noticed about my modified definition of pro-choice is that it does not exclude men. Um, men are included in four out of the five points that are made, and the only reason that they are excluded from the remaining point is because men don't get pregnant. Um, if we ever develop technology that allows men to carry children, then they will be um, equally a part of that right as women are. Uh, at the moment, no such technology exists, and so as a matter of simple genetics, it is the one part of the rights from which men are excluded. But when it comes to choosing if and when to have sex, when it comes to choosing uh, whether to use birth control, when it comes to surgeries that can affect um, a person's fertility, and when it comes to, what was the last one, being educated um, about their bodies, about sex in general, and about their rights, reproductive rights, when it comes to having or not having sex, um, men are equally a part of this. And I find that all too often they are excluded from this debate both by women and by themselves. Um, I've heard men say, I don't have an opinion on whether abortion should be legal or not because I don't have a uterus, I can't get pregnant, and therefore it's, it's not up to me. Well, no, it's not up to you to decide for any individual woman, but that doesn't mean that you can't have, that you can't take a position and it's also a little bit disingenuous because if you really believe that if you're not the one who's pregnant, then it's not up to you to have an opinion on the matter, then you're kind of a default pro-choice person because you think that it should be up to that individual to make whatever decision they deem appropriate. Um, one major problem that tends to come about because of the fact that abortion is focused on so exclusively in in this issue is that I've heard a lot of people who identify themselves as pro-life accuse the pro-choice group of being pro-abortion and 
that is extremely, extremely inaccurate and to me reflects a very, um, a very narrow and if not self-centered, then Western-centered and also last 30 years centered worldview. Um, what you need to understand is that in countries like China, where they currently have a one child per family law that applies to, not to all families, but applies to a lot of families, if a woman has already had a child and gets pregnant again, she will be forced by the government to have an abortion. She will be dragged into an abortion clinic and that pregnancy will be terminated against her will. Pro-choice people are vehemently opposed to that because that is taking away that woman's right to choose. If you notice, it's not just that a woman has the right to choose an abortion if she wants it, it's that she has a right to choose either to carry a pregnancy to term or to not carry that pregnancy to term. And no one else has the right to make that decision for her, either as a result of legislation or anything else. Um, another example would be eugenics programs and the United States, Canada, I believe the UK, many countries in Europe, uh, Japan, Singapore, um, a whole bunch of places I will link um, to a Wikipedia article below. I know that it's not the best source in the world, but it does give a lot of good information. And a little tip on using Wikipedia articles, go to the very bottom of the article where it lists all of the resources that were cited. And if you really want to know about the topic, go to your library, get copies of those original resources, and do your fact checking in that way to make sure that things haven't been quote mind lifted, that kind of thing. Um, anyways, eugenics programs were huge in the early 20th century. And in a lot of places they were legislated by the government. Um, in other places they were slightly less official, but they, they were definitely um, allowed by the government. The government was not preventing them. And people were being forcibly sterilized against their will so that they could not reproduce. Being pro-choice means being opposed to that kind of treatment. Um, pro-choice... Pro-choice means thinking that the individual has the right to determine their own reproductive issues and not have it forced on them by anyone outside, not by their family, not by their spouse, not by the government. Um, so yeah, the suggestion that pro pro-choice is synonymous with pro-abortion is patently absurd and extremely offensive not only to our morals but to our intelligence and to the intelligence of the people who are levying the accusations because there's absolutely no justification for saying that and I find it really difficult to believe that anyone actually believes that we sit around saying, hey guys, you know, there was a lot of abortions last year, but it's not enough. So over the next three years, we want to see that number double. No one is saying that. So stop pretending that we're saying that. Um, anyway, uh, moving on. What I've found in most of my discussions with people who are on both sides of this issue. Um, people who identify themselves as pro-life and people who identify themselves as pro-choice. Other than the extreme hardliners on the pro-life side who say that the abortion doctors deserve to die and the women getting abortions either deserve to die or deserve to go to prison and that kind of thing, most of the people that I've spoken to, most of the reasonable, rational, real kind of people who aren't just, you know, quoting sound bites all the time, if you ask them, okay, so if you want abortion to be illegal, what do you think the punishment should be for women who get an abortion? 
almost all of them say that they don't think there should be one. They don't think there should be jail time. They don't think that there should be a fine. They think maybe at the most there should be counseling or something like that mandated. And it seems, you know, when you really, really talk to these people, it's what they want is for there not to have to be any more abortions. And they think that the only way to do that, the way that they see to do that as the best way, is to make abortion illegal. And they focus, 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 focus on abortion as being the issue. And what they don't realize, or don't seem to realize, what I certainly didn't realize when I was younger, when I was, um, when I did associate myself as pro-life, was that the reason abortions happen there are two main reasons. There are unwanted pregnancies and there are congenital defects that are going to cause um, the fetus to die anyway and pose a risk to the life of the mother. So first is the like 90% of abortions that are the result of unwanted pregnancies. So Let's put stricter rules in place to protect people from being raped and those unwanted pregnancies go away. Let's educate both men and women about how pregnancy happens so that we don't have kids or adults getting pregnant without meaning to because they don't understand the biology of what's going on. Let's make sure that birth control is legal and easily accessible. Let's make sure that if someone like me, who does not want to have biological children ever, wants to get a tubal ligation, she doesn't have doctors refusing to give them to her, saying that, well, she's under 45 and she doesn't have kids yet, so no, they're not going to do that. Um, you know, let's, let's make it so that that can't happen. Let's make it so that doctors can't refuse to perform a medical service based simply on their opinion that I might change my mind. Um, I haven't wanted to have biological children since I was about seven years old and figured out how it worked. Um, and I wanted them even less once I learned a little bit more about genetics. Um, the fact that some of some traits that I have um, that have made my life very difficult that can be genetically passed on, I don't want to pass those on. I would love to raise children, but I want to adopt children that are already in the world. I do not want to bring more children into it. So, you know, stop telling me that I'm not allowed to have a tubal ligation. Because if I ever get an abortion, you know, I do everything I can to prevent it. But if my partner and I accidentally get pregnant and I'm put in the position of deciding whether or not to have an abortion, that will be a direct result of the fact that I was denied the right to have a tubal ligation when I wanted one. Um, and as far as the, even as far as, um, as I said, congenital defects goes, what would be the best way to stop that? Well, it would be testing to determine early on if a condition like that existed and then, if that condition did exist, what you'd want to do is find some way to treat it in utero to either halt or reverse whatever is causing that condition. What's the one thing that we seem to have right now that might possibly make that possible in the future? I'm not pretending that it's possible right now. Stem cell research. And yet, most of the people who are opposed to Abortion are also opposed to that, even though after the education and after getting rid of, you know, as much as we can of the unwanted pregnancies aspect, that would reduce or eliminate the remaining abortions that are done for medical reasons. So, anyway, uh, those are my thoughts on the matter. Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you later, YouTube.